Welcome everyone. In today's class, we're going to be looking at a velocity banking case study using a home equity line of credit in the second position. Okay. It is April, 2023, as I'm recording this video. So this is going to be a really relevant case study where the interest rates are much higher. If you've been watching my channel for a little while, and maybe you saw the older videos that are maybe two years old, three years old, the interest rates, the, the offsetting effect might have looked way better. And you're trying to compare it to see, wait, does velocity banking still make sense where interest rates are double, almost triple what what he's illustrating years ago in these in these older case studies? Right. So I want to give you that confidence where if you continue to run the numbers on your personal financial situation, if you know the formulas, which I'm going to regurgitate, I'm going to go over this in this case study here, and you can determine whether or not the concept makes sense. In many cases, in, in, in a lot of the cases that, that I run with certain scenarios and clients that are coming to me, yes, velocity banking still makes sense with a home equity line of credit at say 9% or 10% or 11%. I've always had this general rule. You can go back four or five years. I've always mentioned that once you have a line of credit, whether it's a HELOC or a PLOC, once it's above 15%, it becomes really unattractive in terms of the, the difference when comparing the debt snowball strategy or debt avalanche, making extra payments, uh, it's kind of hard where we we really don't want to stay there if you're someone that has a debt tool whether it be a personal line of credit business line of credit home equity line of credit and you're in the double digit range um, you're probably there because of your existing credit score so it's just a matter of improving your credit to get the better rates even in this high interest rate environment i'm still having clients come to me with helocs around five percent six percent six and a half less than seven personal lines of credits that are under nine percent seven eight nine percent whereas there are other people that i see that have a home equity line of credit at like 12.75 percent or 11 percent or people with personal line of credits at 13.75 or 15.75 percent we don't want to stay there right for a really long period of time eventually want to graduate move, change the banks, improve the credit so that we can continue the velocity banking strategy, or it's simply just not going to make sense, right? It's not going to be effective for you. So as long as we run the numbers like we're going to do here, so I'm going to take it to the board and I'm also going to be sharing my screen um, that is going to show you some additional information to be aware of as we're going through this particular case study. So with that being said, let's dive right into this. We're going to spend a lot of time focusing on interest costs. I think that is extremely important in today's environment because we're in a high interest rate environment, right? So here we go. Starting off with the four major numbers. Client on the board here is making $23,299.40 a month. Their total overestimated expenses are $19,301.04. Total debt is $1,265,375.72. Okay, a lot of debt. A lot of this debt is mortgage debt. He's got a lot of uh, uh, properties, real estate investments. So his concern is more of eliminating some of the consumer debt that he has rather than the property. So that's what we're going to be focusing on here. His net cash flow is $3,998.36. Could be a little bit more. Has a HELOC, uh, second lien home equity line of credit, 95 grand is a credit limit. The interest rate is 9%. Okay. And I'm going to show to you how we bring this 9% rate and cut that nearly in half to about a 5% cost, right? And then we're going to compare it to the other debts that we're eliminating. And I'm going to show you those interest rates. And then you get to determine, yes, it still makes sense, right? His goal, pay off debt, acquire more real estate. So first we're going to pay off some debt, not all of his debt, not all of the 1.2 million. We're paying off some of the debt creating more cash flow, more liquidity, so that we can turn around and actually acquire more debt, more real estate debt that produces more cash flow. That is this person's strategy. That is what they desire to do. As long as we manage expectations, as long as we know what our leverage capacity is, that's going to help us not be in a situation where we become over leveraged. Okay. Velocity banking really helps you with not 
over leveraging yourself. And when you do over leverage, you're immediately going to feel it when doing velocity banking, you're going to see it, right? And it's up to you to make that decision, whether you want to take on more risk by going into more debt or paying down debt before accumulating more, right? And staying in a healthy range that you feel comfortable with according to your abilities, right? Your capabilities, your expectations, right? So on this particular home equity line of credit, when the client approached me, they already had a bunch of debt on the HELOC. So whenever you're in a situation where you're trying to implement velocity banking, and maybe you already have a debt tool, and then you learned about the benefits of velocity banking, and then you realize, holy crap, I could be using this way differently. That's so what this person realized they owe 85,000. So we're going to be doing velocity banking on the tool itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, I'm going to compare it to debt snowball, what that snowball says to do in regards to paying off debt and we're going to compare because debt snowball is our measuring stick to determine if velocity banking will be going faster than debt snowball which debt snowball just simply means making extra payments on your debt one by one creating a snowball effect lowest balance to highest balance if that goes faster than velocity banking then we have an argument to say hey we probably shouldn't do this we should stick to the uh, a traditional method maybe try to find another debt tool at a lower rate right that would be like the guidance that i would give my clients right so at 85000 owed 85,33606 owed on the line times that by 9% here is your number 7,680.24 write that down in your notes you can also plug in your own numbers with your own debt tool with however much you owe right on your tool times it by whatever the rate is that's your number this is the most amount of interest you could possibly pay in a 12 month period so the goal is to reduce that number as much as humanly possible now here's what you have to understand when you're running this math this is this number is assuming that all you did was make interest only payments to the HELOC right that's that is not the case in in many of the HELOCs that we're using usually a HELOC is um, principal and interest payments or gives you the option to do interest only payments and then you can add principal right but when we're doing velocity banking no matter what type of HELOC we have we're always paying towards principal we're dumping all of our income into the HELOC so we're not just paying interest so by knowing this if you were to make just the monthly payment that is interest and principal this number will naturally be lower right so that's the max that we can go just want to be very very clear on that another element here uh by the way that's the monthly payment i know i crossed it out because i'm going to be mentioning something soon but this is the monthly payment if it was interest only 60 640 bucks right you divide that by 12 you should get this number interest only payments someone does principal it's going to be a little bit more another component of velocity banking here is we're using a credit card to run bills and earn about 2% cashback rewards. We've identified what those bills are within this number of the 19 grand. We have $4,046.86 per month that we can run through a credit card, pay it off each and every month, and get $80 back, $80.93 at 2%, right? Here's our rule of leverage. You take the credit limit, times it by 66%, you should get this number 62,700 is cash flow times 12 where it currently is 3,998.36 you should get this number 47,980.32 average yearly cost when doing velocity banking should be around this number 4,280.58 which is actually a 5% cost of borrowing the bank said nine we paid five Okay. That is the, the beauty of velocity banking here where we can manipulate that rate, right? So this rate is not nearly as important as what we actually pay. So if we, when we're looking at tools, when you're applying for a HELOC, that's what you want to be running the numbers on. Okay, this bank is doing 9%. This bank is at 7 You know, typically you're going to want to go with the, the lower rate amongst all the different tools, but there may be some factors as to why you would go with a higher rate. For example, maybe you're looking at two different HELOCs. This one's at 9% and this one's at 7%. So you're like, let me go with the 7%. But with the 7% HELOC at this particular bank, they uh, force you to do an initial withdrawal of 25 grand and you can't pay off that 25 grand in full within the first year versus this HELOC's at 9% 
and there's no limitation as to how much you can borrow or if you're forced to borrow a certain amount. So that might be a deciding factor right there. So it's important to read between the lines, look at everything that's being on, laid out on the table so you know how to move forward. And if you need additional help, obviously you can reach out to me, book a consultation, and we can work through that together, right? So coming back, we went over the, the layout here. This is going to be the velocity banking scenario, right? Of money going in, money coming out. And I'm gonna be highlighting what that net interest cost is per month. And I'm overestimating it on purpose, right? When this person's actually doing it, his numbers should actually be better than what I provide. In reality, the cost will probably be around 4%, maybe even lower, right? When he's fully doing velocity banking at its full potential. So at 85,000, 336.06 times by 9%, divide by 365, average daily borrowing costs is gonna be $21.04, okay? $21.04 is what I pay for however long I owe 85,336.06. Understand, the very first month of doing Velocity Banking, I'm never gonna owe this amount, why? Because the first move I do is I dump income into the line. So I'm never actually gonna pay this 2104. It's gonna be a little bit less. Nonetheless, still put it there. So here's what you do. Take the 85 minus income, you should get this number, 62,036, 66, times that by 9%, divide by 365. Now you're at $15.29. So here's what I'm doing, I'm getting an average. I'm saying for roughly 10 days, we owe this number. For roughly 10 days, we owe this number, all right? And then expenses are coming out little by little. Notice how there's a difference, okay? We went from 19,301.04 expenses to now 18,661.02 because of the payment. We no longer have a payment because our income is the payment. We're dumping our income into the HELOC before the payment is even due, which manipulates what you actually owe on the due date itself, which is gonna be the interest on the due date itself. That's how this particular HELOC, I believe, works. So the payment's going to get pushed out where he's not even going to owe a payment because when we dump our paycheck in, that registers as a payment, right? So you're immediately canceling interest from accruing. Nonetheless, still going to show overestimation, creating that, that buffer space, right? And even with all this buffering that I'm doing, I'm going to compare it to that snowball and show you the, the difference. You can be like, oh, wow, there's, there's quite a bit of an advantage here, right? So this is what's actually coming out of the HELOC. The interest cost stays in there, which I'll show you what that net interest cost will be. And that's what's going to add to the ending balance of what is owed. So when we take money out little by little, not all at once, no, we're not taking out 18 grand all at once and then pay bills, taking it out little by little as bills are due, that's when we will pay them, right? And we're going to transfer it out of the HELOC back into the checking account to pay that bill. Whatever can be paid with a credit card, right? That money actually stays in the HELOC for a longer period of time. We're swiping credit over here. And then on the due date of that card, 25 days later, we're paying the statement balance in full, moving that money out of the HELOC into the checking, checking auto pays, the credit card avoids interest. We actually apply the, the cashback rewards to the balance of the credit card, which means 80 less dollars coming out of the line of credit, which means more money you recover in interest. All of that, trust me, adds up month over month. It's quite amazing. So here we go. Income went in, expenses came out at the end of the month. Here's where my balance should be. 80,697.68 times that by 9%, divide by 365, you should get $19.89, okay? So what you do is you're gonna add the three numbers, 2104, 15.29, and 1989. Add the three, and you get this number, $56.22. Divide by three, you should get this number. This is assuming, again, that he owed 85 grand for 10 days, 62 grand for 10 days, and then 80 grand for 10 days. That's not the case. It's more like in the middle of all those numbers is, is what's happening, right? As money goes in, it gets, it sits, it parks, money's slowly coming out. So on average, we're paying about $18.74 a day. Times that by 30 days, here is your overestimated borrowing costs in the first month of doing Velocity Banking. 
$562.28. So on the due date, that's how much he should uh, pay. It'll, it'll either, depending on the bank, it'll either automatically take it from what's owed in the HELOC, right? That's one way. Another way is it'll come from a checking account or they'll require a, a payment to be made. But understand that that 562 28 that's money we were already paying. So we're not paying any new interest, right? We were already paying it over here before, which was 640. So we brought 640 and we reduced it down to 562 28. And then when you minus cashback rewards, we're really paying about $481.35. You're gonna get a bill for 562.28, this particular client. And then those of you who are running your numbers along this case study here, you'll get you'll get charged from the bank. That's what it'll say you'll owe. You say, hey, this is what you owe on the due date. You have two options. Either the bank will take it from the available credit in the HELOC itself automatically on the due date, or we have to pay it. So because you already dumped all your income into the HELOC in advance, what would happen is either there is no payment to begin with. That's one thing that will happen. Okay. So uh, like I said, not all HELOCs are the same here. So I want you to comprehend this. When you dump money into the home equity line of credit that you have first lien or second lien, what is here are the different things that will likely happen. Either that will register as your month's payment, especially if it, especially if you dump more than what the payment is, right? So in this case, if it's 640 or whatever, and this person gets a paycheck, five grand, he dumps five grand into his HELOC, that just registered as a payment for that month. So that means he won't have a payment. So that means moving forward, all he's paying is whatever interest a accrues within that statement cycle of the HELOC itself. So that's probably going to happen for most of you. Another version is when you pay into the HELOC, you may be given an option. Every time you make a payment, it'll say additional payment principal. It might, you, you can circle the box or you check it. You say additional principal payment. That means whatever you pay in, none of it is applying towards interest. Ideally, that's the position you always want to be in when you're doing velocity banking is you always want your initial paycheck the money goes the money that goes in always want that to be principal ideally you may not have an option you may not have a choice depending on what heloc you get if you do have the choice always select principal only payments so what will happen is on the due date you would have accrued interest owed over the last 25 day 30 day cycle right you will have the option to either pay that from your checking account whatever that interest is from your next paycheck that comes in whatever it is with what your entire income and it will, it'll wipe it out right or they'll take it from the balance owed uh from the available credit i'm sorry from the available credit in the heloc we'll just take it right out of there so that means you wouldn't have had to like pull money out and throw money back in. You wouldn't have had to do that. I like those kinds of HELOCs because this allows me to keep like every single time, 100% of my money, every single time it's going to principal, going to principal. And then on the due date, they're just extracting their cost, right? Out of the available credit. We're paying interest no matter what, right? Our goal is simply to reduce that cost as much as humanly possible and then compare what is the, what is the net cash flow gain for doing that. So when we're looking at this right here, 562.28 is what we're overestimating our cost to be. Balance at the end of the first month of doing velocity banking here in April, 2023, 80,697.68. So then you add the interest. Here's your ending balance, 81,259.96. Here's the cash flow gain, $158.67, right? And let me, uh, let me check my math here just to make sure. So we got 640 originally. That's where we were at in two cents minus, let me do 562. I want to see if I okay, it's 77 and then add the 80, All right? See that? So month one, even though I didn't, I didn't pay off a debt yet, right? We're not, we didn't even pay anything off yet. We're paying down the debt tool by doing velocity banking on the debt tool. And we get $158.67 more dollars going to the principal of that debt. So that is cash flow recovery, $158.67. That's cash flow. Okay. What I want to do now is share my screen and I'm going to take you to the different debts that we're looking at. Okay. 
So we've got 14 debts that we're looking at that this client wants to eliminate in their finances. This is what they want to eliminate. So outside of these 14 debts, the rest is mortgage debts, right? All mortgage loans. We're not even touching those. So here is what debt snowball says to do. This is the traditional, normal, easy way of paying off debt relatively quicker than doing nothing. You want to line up your debts from smallest to greatest, all right? So I did that for you, all in order. You see that. Gave you the what the debt is, balance owed, monthly payments, interest rates. Look at these different interest rates, all right? Some are on 0%, some are not. If you're wondering what this number here is, this is a cash flow index number, okay? Now this is another strategy that you can implement on top of velocity banking or on top of debt snowball to help you identify which debt you should really go after according to cash flow recovery, right? The lower the number is, the more attractive that debt is to pay off, right? And the way you get the cash flow index is you would take uh, the balance owed divided by the monthly payment, you should get this number. If the number is below 50, that's an attractive debt to go after. If it is above 50, it is not attractive to go after, okay? In the debt snowball world, it ignores this. It ignores that model. All we're looking at is balance when it comes to snowball. So if you were to do debt snowball in the first month, looking at the 3,998.36 cash flow, you would be able to pay off. This debt would get paid off. I'm gonna draw a line through it. Be able to pay off this one, the third credit card, the fourth and the fifth, right? Each of these cards are charging $25 a month. So that's $125 cash flow gain in the first month, 125. Velocity Banking got 158, right? Here's my math. That snowball pays off five debts in the first month. Cash flow gain is 125. Credit card number six goes down to 2,547.04, right? Cause that's the remaining cash flow, right? So of the roughly 4K, we are able to eliminate five debts and there was some money left over. Whatever's left over gets applied towards the next smallest debt. So notice how we ignored this interest here. There's zero interest on this particular debt. This is what gets me a head start over Snowball because they're ignoring zero interest and they're just paying attention to balance owed. Whereas in Velocity Banking, we're paying attention to cash flow and interest savings because that's the game that's where, that we're playing here. If, if all the numbers are the same, same income, same expenses, same cash flow, even if we did the same things like getting another job, right? Uh, cutting off certain bills, right? Being a minimalist. If Even if we did all those things the same, we're still fighting interest, right? Even if we increase our income. We're still fighting interest. Whoever pays less interest, whoever recovers more cash flow wins, period. That's what we're solving for, right? So that's what happens in month one of Debt Snowball. So, so far in month one, Velocity Banking is only about $28.67 ahead of Snowball, right? So I'm going to take it back to the board here, come back here, end of one month, end of April, here's our balance roughly. And again, this is overestimated. This number could be a little bit higher so I'm, I'm giving more of an advantage to that snowball and we're still coming out uh, ahead right so the following month may income goes in expenses come out seventy six thousand six twenty one fifty eight. our interest cost reduces more and it's going to keep reducing month by month so instead of 562.28 from 640 now we're at 532.12 from 562 add that up End of May, I should be around here, 77,153.70. Again, there's another there's another cash flow gain, 111.09. If he keeps running bills through a credit card, this is another huge advantage I have over Snowball. They don't tell you to do this. So I'm getting $80 back each and every month. That's cash flow. This isn't this isn't new stuff. This isn't new bills. This is bills that they have every single month to live and operate. So now they're paying $80.93 less. That's more cash flow. That's less interest costs in the HELOC. It's a dollar, dollar here, dollar here, two dollars here, three dollars here. It just keeps, it's gonna compounding and this is what's gonna help us take off. And we haven't even really done velocity banking yet. I'm actually fixing his situation with his debt tool. He can't even use a debt tool yet because it's nearly maxed out. So you can't really put it to work just yet, right? We need to create space to actually be able to consolidate debt in there. So 
we get 111.09 in mum2. Let's share my screen again. What does that snowball do, right? In mum2, it pays off credit card six and gets a $94 cash flow gain. So it's, you know, we're kind of neck and neck. We're, we're, we're close, right? So two, this gets paid off. And then a portion of debt number seven goes down a portion. We're not able to pay it all off, but a portion of it goes down. Month three, we're able to pay off credit card seven. And then you, you catch the drift, right? We get the cash flow gain of the 34. And then again, another portion of the cash flow pays this down and it'll kind of keep going. But notice how we're ignoring this 0%. There's no cost to maintain that debt and to only get 35, 56, 34. Right? Watch what we do on Velocity Banking. Right? So we come back to the board here. End of May, 111.09. End of June, 111.35. Look how the interest cost keeps dropping. The more we reduce interest, that's more cash flow principal paying down the debt itself. So we're creating more equity, more space, and we're getting ready to make a move that's gonna propel us way ahead of that snowball. Right. So if you kept going, you just keep running numbers, income in, expenses out, income in, expenses out, right? And you run this math, highest balance, lowest balance, ending balance, get your three daily borrowing cost numbers, add the three, divide by three, you do that each and every month, you should be getting around these numbers here, right? End of July, boom, the numbers, they're, they're pretty consistent, because again, we're not paying anything off, we're just simply getting $80.93, and then we're reducing the cost by about 30 bucks or so each and every month, right? So by August, right, income went in, expenses out. You see how I add the interest to the to the balance, and then we go again, income in, expenses out, keep it going. We're gonna get it right around sixty four thousand six fifty one sixty six end of August, adding all that interest in there, cash flow gain. Here's where we're at, right now in month five. So April, May, June, July, August, end of August, beginning of September ish time frame. We're gonna be able to make a chunk because now we've created space. We're going to make this chunk of 18,693.58. This is actually an overestimated chunk. And we're going to pay off what debt snowball has already paid off. We're now going to remove those debts. And we're going to get a $530 cash flow because we're going to pay off some of the debts that debt snowball was supposed to do. And we're going to pay off certain debts that that, that that snowball did not do that we're accounting for. Right? And I'm going to point them out for you. So I'm going to share my screen yet again. Coming back, we're going to eliminate. I'm going to underline. You know what? I'll just write it. I'll just put velocity banking, velocity banking, velocity banking, velocity banking. We're going to skip this debt because that's on zero. And we're going to pay this one off. Velocity banking. Okay. So if we were to add these numbers up, and I'm going to double check my math here, but we're probably paying off the first four credit cards for sure skipping over credit card five because it's at zero all right we're gonna get that 94 there more than likely and then look we're gonna skip skip this debt skip that and skip that whereas that snowball did not skip it so you're not supposed to skip it. you're supposed to go in order from least to greatest and we're actually gonna pay off this one okay velocity banking is gonna eliminate this why cash flow notice how cash flow index formula or you take the balance and you divide it by the monthly payment, you're going to get a number. Look how this is at 99, 98, 99, and 69. So by skipping over those, coming over here where it's just at 41.35, this got a 32.12. So I skipped over this to hit this. And then I skipped over these three to hit this to recover 17.24%, to recover 21.24%, 25%, 25%, 29%, 30%. That's all going to 9%. And then what do we, what do we know? Based on the math, 9% can become around five. So we're dramatically cutting this, this interest cost. And this is what's gonna skyrocket me ahead and just kind of blow past the traditional method, right? And look how much cash flow we gain, 336, where they're fighting for 34 bucks, 95, 94, 25 bucks, 35 bucks, 56 bucks. You're not doing anything. You're taking much longer. Meanwhile, 
you're continuing to get smacked by this high rate and that payment. So we're going to consolidate that. So let me just double check my math here. 13,893. And guess what? Look what I did. I'm adding the numbers as is. I didn't even reduce because understand we're five months out of making 336, 336, 336, right? 34 bucks, right? We're, we're, we're five months out paying $94, 25, 25, 25, 25. I'm actually adding these numbers. I'm actually adding that up and telling you that with Velocity Banking, we're still ahead, right? So 13,893.67, then add 3,020.06 plus 772.05 plus 673.40 plus 170.85 plus 16355, 18,693.58. Got it? You taking notes? I hope you are. 18,693.58, chunk, 18,693.58. So at this point, you can agree with me that this is an overestimated chunk amount. The number is going to be much less when you actually factor in all those monthly payments that we're making over the last five months. So the chunk will be less, right? Which means the balance on the HELOC will be even less. And now we have a cash flow gain of $530. Whereas debt snowball, let's let's go back to the screen. Let's let's add where are they at in, in cash flow gain, right? In the first month, they got 125 in the first month. So they got 125. In the second month, they got $94. Then they got $34. Then they got $35, right? They're at 288. And then in month five, we paid off one through seven so far and eight. So we're paying off nine. So in month five, they should be able to pay this off. So I'll give it to them, 56. They're at $344 in total cash flow recovery. That's it. Whereas on Velocity Banking, right, 344 with that snowball, Velocity Banking, just counting this alone, we're at 530, right? Add the 640, we're at 11, $1,170 staying in the HELOC. So we're, we're that much more ahead in cash flow and interest savings. Again, we're getting that $80 every single month. So, I mean, we're just making a lot of progress here, okay? So you make the chunk, the balance goes up to 83,345.24 understand that's not where it'll actually be the number will be less this is just creating room forever overestimation i'm putting velocity banking like in a worse position and it's still producing a phenomenal result more than that snowball so you get to weigh the odds here right there's no magic showing you all the rates all the different costs what's happening here we go now my expenses are 18,131.02 that's what's actually coming out of the HELOC it went down by 530 bucks. Okay, so income in, expenses out, end of the month. I'm at 78,176.86. My borrowing costs obviously went back up again, right? It went from 440, went back up to 546 because the, the balance is higher, right? That makes sense. Okay, so end of September, I'll probably end up around here. October, we're at 74. November, 69. December, 65. January, we're at 60,054.50 plus the interest. February, now we're in 2024, we're at 55,298.59, okay? Meanwhile, that snowball is now trying to pay off that big credit card of the 13K to get that 336. By the way, that's 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 what they're hitting now. So that'll take them a couple months to eliminate that before they even get to the cash flow. Meanwhile, we've been, we've been baking in that cash flow for months ahead of them, so we're way ahead. Come March, we're around 50,000. 50803 borrowing costs around 34317 around between January and March right depending on how well the client does all that good stuff we're going to be mapping out our next chunk and what will most likely happen take it back to the screen here so I can show you the different debts we are most likely looking at cash flow index formula here it says to go after this debt that one got a 41.2 says to go after this one to loan 41000 from, from a velocity banking perspective I would agree with this from a debt snowball perspective, th this is this would be the next debt to accomplish, right? So moving 7.8%, we could either do it in one shot because we have the space to do so, but I probably wouldn't recommend doing that, right? I'd want to take it in bites, right? I don't want to over leverage myself on the HELOC. 
So if it's between January and March and the balance is anywhere between 60 and 50,000 owed, I'll probably do a 50% chunk of that, maybe less, right? And it's gonna drastically cut that 7.8% and it's gonna drastically increase the principal of the 100904 payment. More of that 100904 is now going towards the principal of the debt, right? So I'm gonna be able to pay this off faster than that snowball because they're still playing over here with, with these different debts, right? They're still playing with this one. This will get done in a couple months. Then they'll start hitting this, right? They may actually start hitting it before we chunk at it, but still nonetheless, because we're gonna chunk, it's gonna put us ahead. Then we get the thousand, right? And then from there, we're just, you know, that snowball's tracking along. It's not like they're way behind us, but we're just being more efficient with our dollars, right? And understand that while that snowball is paying these different debts off, they still have their HELOC that they're just making interest interest only payments on. Or maybe they're making principal and interest, but they're getting smacked with $640 payments, money going towards interest. So, so notice how we're getting a double effect here. We're using the HELOC to wipe out these, these debts while simultaneously recovering cash flow on the HELOC payment itself because of how we're doing velocity bank. It's just, it's, it's pretty phenomenal here. So for those of you who have high incomes and high expenses, a lot of debt, 1.2 mil, and you, maybe you got a HELOC at your disposal, you don't even know about it, you weren't not even using it properly. Here's a great way to you know consolidate debt into that, what you would think is a high rate naturally, but I just showed you how we can bring it down to 5% because if you add up these parentheses numbers, right? These are representing the interest costs of each month. Add all that up, you should get this number right here. In one month, in one year, you should pay around this number, 4,280.58. That is overestimated cost. It'll probably be less in reality, right? You're probably paying around 4%. And in a marketplace like today, where prime rate is at 8%, federal funds rate, what is that 4.75% or something like that? Average loans are, you know, mortgage loans are going out at like six, 7% right now, even higher. So what a unique advantage you have by doing velocity banking and financing things or paying off debt. And you're, you're in a less than 5% interest cost of borrowing. So you put yourself in a very unique position to eliminate debts extremely fast. So that answers a major question. I think a lot of you have been struggling with is does velocity banking still make sense at a, at a high rate? Here's a case study pr to prove. Yes, it does. Does it delay things that, you know, would I prefer a lower rate? Of course, but the, whatever the rate is and not nearly as important as what you actually are paying in net interest costs. Okay. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. On this channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking and kingdom authority, really bringing faith and finances together. I'm a financial coach, consultant, strategist you can work with me one-to-one -one, book a call link below join any one of my courses programs to invest in yourself right imagine imagine investing in yourself a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks for coaching depending on what you can afford and then imagine money going back into your pocket so whatever you put in right say for example you invested in a coaching call with me it's 275 an hour so you put 275 an hour into yourself and then i put five thousand dollars back into your pocket just by showing you the different interest cost savings that you could be experiencing and that's the type of math that i want to be able to run with you right with with this particular client that's really all they did was they just booked a one hour coaching call with me and i just showed them how to recover in a period of time over a thousand bucks in interest pay off what was it six to eight debts i believe it was in that time frame recover so much interest costs right we we took that 640 we reduced it dramatically we're just implementing a lot of different things getting to this person's goal that much faster right and that's what velocity banking allows you to do so with that being said that's the ways that i can serve you help you and guess what if you're nowhere near this type of income right making 20 25k a month let's say you're only making 2000 a month 4000 a month right low average american income salary 50 
40k a year let's just say and you want to implement this but you know backs against the wall maybe your negative cash flow zero cash flow only 50 bucks a month 100 bucks a month in cash flow that is no excuse for you to reach out to me i have a ministry of finance called finance geek ministry and i have a couple of different unique ways that you can get access to me one-to-one -one, okay money is not required but work effort discipline and patience are if you have those things and you're willing to run your numbers and you're willing to reveal your numbers to me and and do the work and do the things that i'm telling you to do in, in these videos that i create we're going to get along well together and then you'll get to a point where you do have positive cash flow and you're going to be willing to invest in yourself in some coaching and, and some financial education and literacy it's just going to propel you forward right my, my goal is to save you many many years i've got clients in their 60s 70s and 80s right I'm trying to buy back a lot of time for you that you missed out because you didn't have access to this information. This has been, you know, guarded or high ticket barriers and uh, expensive wall barriers to get to get past to get to this information. I'm breaking down those barriers for you. It's completely free. Take this information. Go with it. Right. Some of you may not even need to book a call with me because I just revealed all the steps to you for you to go and take and now you're about to go and run with it for someone that's watching that's also making 20 25k a month and you're like oh my goodness light bulb went off light bulb went off there like he just gave me the formulas the systems you know boom laid it out for you next action steps whether you hire me or not you're going to want to keep watching the video content on this channel and if you want to narrow your search in terms of what content to watch if you're trying to get a home equity line of credit go to my channel directly go to playlist then click on velocity banking with a home equity line of credit right I, I broke it up into different segments right so if you're trying to obtain a line of credit you don't even have a debt tool yet you're trying to figure out how to get one i have a playlist it's called all about the line of credit go right in there boom right if you're like hey i I don't even understand the concept yet. I don't even have a debt tool. My credit's horrible. I won't I won't qualify for anything. Guess what? I got a playlist just for you. It's called Velocity Banking Pre-Game Work. There's pre-game work that you must do before you implement this strategy, right? So I have a playlist for all of the different scenarios. P-Lock, HELOC, first lien, second lien, cash value life insurance policy, pre-game work, credit, how to get the line of credit, how to qualify the line of credit, broke it up for you into different playlists. This is where you can kind of narrow your, your search, your time, so you don't get distracted with all the other different content that I'm producing that may not be of value to you right this second. Um, I want to point you into the right direction. So go to the channel directly, go to playlists, and really just click that first video and start going through the different case studies. I, I can assure you the numbers that I'm laying out, they're probably your numbers. Very similar. Very similar situations, similar goals, right? I got hundreds of these different case studies that you can just comb through, right? Equip yourself and then jump on a call with me, invest in some coaching, and let's let's go take over the world. Let's have dominion over the world. Let's have some fun together, right? Again, Denzel Rodriguez here, personal finance geek of the 21st century. Have a wonderful day. God bless, and we'll be talking soon.